Good evening and thank you for joining us on News 360 tonight on TV3. I am Issa Moni. And I am Portia Gabo. Coming up, the headlines. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Piccadilly Biscuits. My Life Insurance. And coming up, family of one of the missing Takradi girls says results of police DNA test would not change anything as they insist their daughter is still alive. Meanwhile, Eastern Regional Police Command makes strong case for a DNA testing facility in the region to quicken investigation and prosecution of cases. Also, health patients seeking health care at Salaga Government Hospital at risk as they resort to open defecation in the hospital. Coming up in international news, Russia and Ukraine have completed a long-awaited exchange of prisoners. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And beginning tonight, the grandfather of missing 19-year-old Ruth Abakan says the results of the police DNA test will be inconsequential to the family's belief that their relative is still alive. Emmanuel Anza Kobina stated that the family allowed their, sample, their samples to be taken because they had to comply with what was required of them and not because they believed that the DNA matching test can do anything. The name of missing 19-year-old Ruth Abeka and all students of Diabene Secondary School in Second D in the Western Region was only added to the three missing Takradi girls after a fourth remain were discovered at the second hideout of Samuel Wills. However, she was the first to have gone missing on July 29, 2019, before 19 year old Priscilla Bentum went missing about three weeks later in August last year. Ruth Abeka went missing after a church service. Her grandfather, Emmanuel and Zach Hobner, explained. The investigator at the Kojukrum Police Station 1 Osibo and the transferred commander of the Takradi Central Police Station Superintendent Peter Oforidonko failed to act when he reported the case a day after it happened. He indicated that had the police taken his case serious, they could have perhaps saved the three girls considering the dates Priscilla Bintum also went missing. When he wanted to go back and think about what has happened and see the period that have taken her, you won't mind any policeman because our case took place 29 July 2018. Suppose they took this very action that they are taking, the three complaints could have not happened. Mr. Anza Kobna said on the day the samples were taken, they were left more confused since the team could not answer their probing questions about whether it was necessary for their samples to be taken. How long has the bones kept at that very side? Mm -hmm. If you want to determine, Mm -hmm. My uh, loss has as different. How long? How do you uh, separate other female or male? Are different? Is this pathologist? Nevertheless, he said their hope is not in the results as it will be immaterial since they are of the firm belief that Ruth Abaka is alive. Don't expect the DNA result to conclude our emotion. Mm -hmm. We are doing our own thing. We are playing. Whether DNA result or no DNA result, we are praying to our God. If not, we are asking God to give us a final result. But we don't feel that our daughter is dead. And we are still making such. According to him, the police perhaps want to end the case abruptly. That is why they are doing what they are doing. If I'm witnessing the process that they are doing, and I've got to know that the schools and the materials that they took from the hideout is the same thing that they are doing or they are taking another thing. Let's take for us tomorrow. They brought the result that the DA shows that my daughter is dead. What does he do? He just wants to conclude the uh, case. Be that as it may, he said, even if it means waiting for five years and more for Ruth Abeka to return, the family is prepared to do so. For you, if even you have to wait for five, ten years, you wait. You wait. In God's wisdom, the result, the final result will come. Know 
And still on DNA testing, the Public Relations Officer of the Eastern Regional Police Command, DSP Ebenezer Tete, is making a strong case for crime laboratories to be decentralized to quicken investigation and prosecution of cases. Currently, the Eastern Regional Health Facility does not provide genetic testing for paternity or criminal cases. Yvonne Nikwe has more. Regional Hospital is a fairer point for most health cases in the region, but they do not have what is required to engage in genetic testing. The medical director of the facility, Dr. Enim Boama, explained what a standard laboratory does is DNA testing for HIV viral load and other health conditions. He wished for an equipment that could enable them to test for DNA regarding genetics so they could offer such services to the public. Yeah, I'll be happy for government to provide us with these facilities, but um, with respect to the police investigations and others, I'm not too sure about that because, I mean, those are, have legal implications here and there. For us, we will be happy to have, you know, the facility to be able to help ordinary people who come in to request for those services. The Public Affairs Officer of the Eastern Regional Police, DSP Ebenezer Tete, said ideally all homicide cases, sexual abuse, murder and others require genetic DNA tests are done to ensure suspects picked up a right target before they are charged and processed before court. He noted this would help quicken investigation procedures and other determinants of a case and called for decentralization of laboratory for crime purposes. The sophisticated nature of crime is even what demands that we make some of those facilities available and accessible to officers so that you will not delay the process of investigation and uh, prosecution of some of those cases. Cases of crime which need laboratory testing are done in Accra. If there is a facility in every region that, for instance, if you have to conduct DNA tests, you don't have to go to Accra, that would be the ideal situation. As the country awaits the DNA results of bones suspected to be that of the three missing Takrada girls, which was done in Accra, pressure is mounting on government to invest in DNA testing facilities in other regions as well. Now, simply receiving DNA test results can change one's life. DNA has not only changed how stories on crime are solved, but has become a tool to tell who your family really is. But how accurate are DNA results? Here's when Elias reports. One of the most popular DNA stories in Ghana is that of former Black Stars player Ni Odate Lamti. The former football protege tipped to take over from Brazilian Pele had the worst of what life has to offer. All these misfortunes were perhaps crowned by his 2013 infamous divorce. Odate Lamte had been married for 21 years and raised three girls who turned up not to be his. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We visited his home on Monday, September 3, six years after his painful divorce. Neo Datilanti has moved on, started a family of his own and has two daughters. Though as a footballer he had head of DNA test, he had no idea it could tell if your children were really yours. I thought I was the father but uh, upon rumors that they are not my kids, they said I have to do DNA. My lawyer showed me where uh, they do the DNA. I got to know that yes, the kids are not mine. Odati Lamte explained he visited a medical facility, told them about his ordeal without informing his ex-wife. I know it was a difficult situation. I was very close with the children. And for me to be able to do this, uh, I told them, yes, uh, that I have an infection uh, in my throat. And then upon doctor's advice, I should be able to cure this now. Otherwise, when they grow, they will have problem. At that time, they were all in school, and then uh, uh, the doctor was sitting in the car. They will use a cotton and then put it in, I mean, I think the last tooth that you have, and then they will just take the saliva, and then they will just put, put it in the bottle, and then they will close it, and then I think that's how we went through, uh, we did the three of them. The DNA was supposed to have been ready in two weeks, but it took 
a month to ensure the results were near perfect. After doing this, he took it to South Africa for them to confirm. Mine was a bit expensive at that time because uh, I did not go there with the children. He had to give me a doctor to go and do the DNA. The four of us cost me, each person was 1,000, yeah, 1,000. Plus, the doctor moving the hospital said, yeah, it was about 1,000, 1,002 for one. So it's like you're talking about 4,000 plus. For him, the DNA results brought a defining moment in his life. At that short period, you finding out that they are not yours anymore. Of course, I mean, I don't know the kind of pain that <laughs> any human being can go through uh, more than that. Personally, I'm happy. Uh, I said I'm happy because DNA made me know that these are not my kids. I trusted the DNA because uh, my ex-wife, of course, uh, did not uh, challenge the DNA in court. Popular and influential individuals across the world have had to resort to DNA to determine issues of paternity. Star actor Eddie Murphy refused to believe he was a father of former Spice Girl Melanie Brown's child in 2006, but a DNA paternity test proved otherwise. An online portal which deals in tracing lineages using DNA helped a 66-year-old woman from Denver, Colorado find her 75-year-old sister after 55 years of search for her family. Deputy Chief Biomedical Scientist at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Seth Ajiman, said there's always a margin of error in every laboratory diagnosis. When you are not the father, our probability is going to be zero. There we are able to say they are not the father. So paternity testing is a probability that you are the father or you are not the father. And the probability is always not 100%. So for instance, if you are using black Africans, our probability is 99.97%. He further stated it takes a court to make a final judgment on such cases. So in determination of a biological fatherhood or relationship, the final conclusion comes from a judge. The lab cannot conclude. It is a judge who looks at the um, um, prevailing evidence to say that you are the father. You're watching News 360. Let's now continue with the rest of our stories. And the health of patients seeking health care at the Salaga Government Hospital is at risk. As patients and visitors resort to open defecation in the hospital, the only toilet facility constructed in 2002 under a HIPIC project has deteriorated, forcing them to ease in the open, a situation described by health providers as dangerous, a report by Christopher Amwako. Salaga Government Hospital is a primary health facility which started its operations around the 1960s as a small health center. It was elevated to the status of a district hospital in the 1970s, providing pediatrics, maternity, dental, laboratory services, among others. The hospital records outpatient cases of 100 daily, with malaria topping the cases reported. One big challenge of the hospital is lack of a toilet facility. The only toilet facility available is a HIPIC toilet constructed by the assembly in 2002. However, authorities say it is not in use due to its bad state. This has prompted patients and relatives to resort to open defecation. The health service administrator of the hospital, Aloysius Bukuma, says the situation is worrying. The public toilet that we have in this facility that was put up by the district assembly is in a deplorable state and is quite a distance from the wards and units of the hospital. Uh, that expresses some security concerns for clients. He attributed some of the reasons to the attitude of visitors and called for a radical approach to fight the menace. We also need to, to change uh, attitudes and behaviors of our clients and also to improve the uh, water situation in the hospital. 
a cleaner of the hospital. Bakari Akaya explains what he goes through every morning cleaning the place. When you just come and start moving the place, you see that people are heating inside the grasses and they are urinating inside. Too. As at the time of filing this report, a youth group in Salaga, known as Concerned Youth of Salaga, were molding blocks to start a toilet facility. Goal 6 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals aim at ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all, but the government will need to make conscious efforts at achieving this target. And now the president of the Women in Poultry Value Chain, Victoria Nogbe, says government's report government's rearing of for, for food and jobs rearing for food and jobs program will revamp the poultry sector and increase the participation of women in the poultry industry she made this known at a training program to enhance the capacity of women in the poultry value chain for nearly a decade the ghana poultry sector has contracted as a result of intense competition from imported poultry meat and the decreasing profitability of egg production according to the food and agriculture organization of the united nations fao domestically produced broiler meat has fallen from nearly 60 percent of all poultry consumed in ghana in 2000 to 20 percent in 2011. at the same time imports have increased from 13 1,900 metric tons to over 155,000 metric tons. The government has also embarked on a rain for food and jobs. And more youth have been brought in at our own level, even through the Ghana Poultry Project. There's a mentorship program where the youth have been mentored, and the Ghana Poultry Project even supported some of this youth. We believe that with enabling environment, I think we should be able to produce our poultry as it used to be in the 80s. In order to expand local production and processing of poultry meats and eggs, the Ghana Poultry Program, a five-year project funded by the United States Department of Agriculture, was established. The project has also sponsored women in the poultry value chain to build their capacity to improve upon their business. Funds have also been given to the women to raise birds, improve profitability of egg production, and competitiveness in the Ghanaian poultry sector. Because they gave us a lot of ways how to clean the eggs, how to manage our farms, a lot of things and so forth. So now, as an individual, it has benefited me to move forward in my business. I was also given some of the get the potential to have some of the best in my farm. And now they are starting laying. And then, as I can see, my farm also have grown and then other women also as well as benefited from it. So we have to see to it that Ghana's poultry industry grows. The moment we grow, the moment we get more people, the women and the youth, the young people, getting them on board, creating an enabling environment for them. Women in the poultry value chain say the Ghana Poultry Project has boosted the participation of women in the poultry sector. Let's go to the central region where fisher folk at Mumford in the Goma West District want President Ekufuadu to honor his promise of constructing a landing site in the community. Economic activities, according to the fisher folk, will be boosted with the construction of a landing site. The fisheries sector plays a major role in the Ghanaian national economy, contributing 3% of gross domestic products. In order to transform the fisheries sector, government in 2018 earmarked $235 million for the construction of 10 coastal fishing and landing sites. The 10 identified sites where the landing sites and related facilities will be constructed include Tashi in the Greater Accra region, Axim and Discov in the Western Region and Keta in the Voltu Region. The rest are Elmina, Winneba, Mumford, Sinyabriku, Feta Gumwa and Mori, all in the Central Region. President Ekufado had already cut the sword for the construction of London sites in Mori and Axim. <laughs> Fisher folk at Mumford in the Goma West District say they have waited too long for the construction of a London site. They want President Okufado to fulfill his promise of constructing a London site in Mumford. Mumford. 
Tibido, Wallace, Mde, Kwenbia, Nobashema, Blackwater, Nyansaka. We heard of government plans to construct a landing site at Mumford. Sword has been cut to construct them in some communities, but not Mumford. Many have migrated to Sekendi to fish. I'm appealing to President Kufuado to intervene. The absence of a landing site is greatly affecting fisher folk here. I'm appealing to government to intervene. We can't do anything here in this community without a London site. If it is not provided for us, we won't vote. I was a child when this community was promised of a London site. I feel they are deceiving us. We really want governments to provide this community with a London site. The assemblyman for Mumford said plans to construct a land site in the community started as far back as 1968. Since uh, 1968 to now, we haven't heard anything from the government. But very fortunately, 2008, ex-president Kufour came here to cut a sword that after winning, they will come and then continue the fishing harbor for us. But unfortunately, MPP couldn't win the election. And then the NDC came. We are expecting that they will continue for us, but they too didn't do it for us. It has captured in the budget that they will come and then do it. We have heard that, uh, what do you call it, uh, Agzim Mori, President Akufuara has cut the sword that he is going to start the fishing harbor and then uh, see defense for them. So we are expecting him to come here to do our for us. Bismarck Nkum is the district chief executive of Goma West. The current government, President Akufado, has made it a point to ensure that that London site is constructed. Sword cutting has taken place at Axim and then Mori to cover the 10 landing beaches where we are fortunate to have been captured. So we are expecting that September, October, a uh, contractor should be on site to be able to get this done for us. When this is done, our fishermen who have migrated to the western side, Greater Accra and even Ivory Coast, all of them will come and this will become a hub again. Fisher folk are hopeful that the fishermen who have migrated from Mumford to other fishing communities in La Côte d'Ivoire and within Ghana will return to Mumford to boost economic activities in the area. Now, a woman's favorite accessory is her hair, as it represents her personality, identity, and beliefs. Throughout history, hairstyles have been largely determined by fashion trends. Presently in Ghana, it appears short, sexy haircuts appear to be in vogue. But how has hair trends evolved in the country over the decades? Hair played a significant role in Asian African civilization, symbolizing one's family background, social and marital status, spirituality, and tribe. During the pre colonial and post independence era, placing hair with thread was quite popular, while Afro hair was dominant in the 60s. The Pam and Jerry Kale joined the hair evolution in the 1980s. Although braids date back to at least 5,000 years, it is still a popular trend among women of all ages today. While weaves have been in existence over five decades, the rise in women opting for hair weaves made of human hair created a boom in the industry by the end of the 90s. Wake caps, a popular hair accessory, could be traced back to the 15th century. However, it was not until the 2000s that it became a popular trend among young women. They have since evolved to become more glamorous and expensive with a wide range of textures and styles to choose from. 
natural hair, which is focused on encouraging women to enjoy the natural hair movement instead of extensions and weaves, also became popular in the late 2000s with a variety of styles. Historically, women donning short sexy haircuts and styles is not new. However, it appears a number of young women are going in for it as it radiates confidence and youthfulness. Eric, a stylist who has been in the hair business for 16 years, affirmed most of his clients are now opting for short hairstyles. 90% are opting for short hair a lot. Because sometimes we can come the whole week, long hair don't come, it's short hair, short hair, short hair. Cost. I think short hair is cheaper. There are people who think it's more expensive, but for me it's cheaper. It's cheaper than wearing weaves. It saves me time, energy, and going to the salon. I've had long hair before. I've tried different styles. And with this short hair, it makes me stand out. It makes me unique. Well, if you choose to rock short hair, there are a variety of styles to choose from. But definitely, one thing is certain. New styles would soon emerge. Indeed, a variety of styles to choose from, Misa. I miss the Grace Jones days where wow. and the punky hairstyles or the groovy band. Now we have the Brazilian, <laughs> Mongolian. <laughs> <laughs> we'll return shortly with Mission. Stay with us. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Students and teachers of the Doma Kwemu Junior High School are sitting on a time bomb as the building accommodating them is near collapse. District authorities say they are not able to do much because of lack of funds. Educational infrastructure in the Doma East District has been a major setback to the sector. The situation is widespread in the district, especially in the hard-to-reach communities. The Doma Akwemu Junior High School is one of such schools. Here, the infrastructure has not received any major facelift since its establishment by the Parents Teacher Association some three decades ago. Interestingly, this is a preferred choice for pupils who have graduated from the primary schools in the catchment area. But the current state of the structure, I'm told, has contributed to the decline of the school's enrollment in recent times. Already, portions of its roofing have completely dislodged from their positions with more yet to remove. A torrential rainstorm has also left some defects on the structure. Windows and doors are equally weak. Staff common room and office could no longer support human occupancy, forcing teachers to sit outside when outside the classroom. Teachers are overwhelmed. During the day, that place is very hot. So, in fact, teaching and learning is not uh, all that encouraging. It doesn't go on well. Furniture were provided by parents, but they resolved not to do that again because of government free education policy. The Doma Akwamu Junior High School is not the only school with infrastructural challenge. The Methodist Junior High School in the community also has similar challenge. While primary pupils are confined to decent classrooms, a wooden board cladded structure is what serves JHS 1 to 3 pupils. The classrooms get wet any time it rains. The school authorities have petitioned the district authorities on three occasions, but they are yet to receive feedback. District Chief Executive for Doma East, Emmanuel Ajiman, attributed the disparity in the provision of educational infrastructure to inadequate funding. The infrastructure is a challenge. When you go to most of our communities, you realize that um, the structures under which children study is quite deplorable. It's something that we need to do so much work on. So uh, there is no way, it's not possible that the assembly can capture all those schools. But what we are paying so much attention to is the self-help, so that when the communities do something, if we have somebody somewhere who would want to support in any way, then the assembly will also 
give the um, support that uh, it can afford. Doma East will require support from government, philanthropists and benevolent organizations to improve its infrastructure deficit. Let's remain in the Bono region but in the Doma Central Municipality where construction of an additional facility to ease pressure on the Abuabu Health Centre has stalled and Stanley Nibli has been finding out why. Access to quality health care is one of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations, which is achievable by 2030. However, this is not the situation in communities in the Doma Central Municipality. At Abuabo, a suburb of Doma Ahinku, the community is fortunate to have been provided with a health center which serves more than 15 adjoining communities. Health personnel supervised by the Christian Health Association of Ghana have been posted to the facility and they are rendering services to patrons in the midst of scarce resources and space. The community, with assistance from the Acting Inspector General of Police, James Opombuenu, who hails from the community, initiated the construction of an additional structure to support other services rendered by the health facility. But the project has stalled close to a year after some plastering, roofing and fixing of door and window frame works were done. Part of the building is designated as medical laboratory, but goods escalator are everywhere in the building. The Doma Central Municipal Assembly said generation of internal funds to support community initiated project remain a challenge. If our people don't help us to raise enough funding, it is always difficult for us to do. We don't always want to rely on central government for funding. We are here doing due diligence, making sure that we get value for money projects. So they should have the trust in us that once they pay their revenue to the assembly, we are going to put their resources to good use to benefit the entire community. At the main facility, broken beds have not been repaired, but health personnel have improvised to support patients' admission. There are other defects. Improving health care and infrastructure in Abuabo and its adjoining communities would require resources and conscious efforts to address. And that's it for Mission. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Thanks so much for watching. Now, in our story of the week segment today, exactly a week ago, the police issued a statement that it will, in four weeks, complete the medical test on DNA samples of the retrieved skeletons suspected to be the bones of the kidnapped Takradi girls. On our story of the week, Grace Hamwa Esari looks at developments so far and why the police is yet to release the results as the timeline given elapses. In August, the police issued a statement that it will, in four weeks, complete the test on DNA samples of the retrieved skeletal remains suspected to be those of the kidnapped Takradi girls on August 5. The police, in the same statement, also pointed out that it will investigate all angles as they continue with the search of the kidnapped girls. After some objections from families of the girls, they provided DNA samples for the test, but requested for independent investigations to be carried out. We are prepared to do an independent DNA test in South Africa. Already, there are threats from residents of Takrade to embark on series of demonstrations if the DNA results happen to match that of the retrieved skeletons. The missing of the three Takrade girls is one of the mysteries that will go down the annals of this country. The period that the police asked for for the release of the results of the DNA test has elapsed and pressure is mounting across the length and breadth 
of the country. Ghana until recently took samples for DNA testing to Europe and South Africa. Many of the cases that have really called for DNA testing in Ghana have been those about paternity. One of the persons who made DNA paternity testing popular in Ghana is ex-footballer Ni Odate Lamte. I thought I was the father, but uh, upon rumors that they are not my kids, they said I have to do DNA. My lawyer showed me where uh, they do the DNA. I got to know that, yes, the kids are not mine. Chief biomedical scientist at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Augustine Sego, is one of the brains behind DNA testing in Ghana. He tells us DNA testing goes beyond just paternity testing. I did a feasibility study. I went to 28 courts, so I went far to search for information as to where and when do they request for this crucial test. Upon this study, I came out with the fact that there were a lot columns of cases that are pending in the courts for the DNA. So, we asked him if DNA tests can be done on the skulls found in the septic tank purported to be those of the Takwadi missing girls. Yes, DNA can be done even when the, the case is more than seven years. It's because in a scalp with the tooth on the mandible, okay, there's a nerve connecting the tooth to the scalp, okay? And these are cells. I think they are the last thing that they destroy. The issue also brings to fore the challenge of the absence of a functional DNA facilities in all major health facilities in other parts of the country, apart from the capital, Accra. And even in Accra, the biggest hospital, Kolebu Teaching Hospital, is currently unable to offer the service as the only DNA laboratory that serves the whole of West Africa is not functioning. The machine broke down in 2014, four years after it was inaugurated in Ghana. You will need a constant power. And by then, our power was not stable. So we lost so many regions, which is capital. You can imagine you put 500 or um, 50 samples on the rack. It will run up to two hours. In the last 30 minutes, the power goes off. Since Ghana introduced DNA testing, there hasn't been any law enacted to streamline its use. DNA analyst Dr. Kenneth Frimpong believes the passage of a law is crucial to govern institutions that offer such services. With all the matters arising, the most suspected news is the results of the forensic examination the police was suspected to release on September 5, which it failed. The question is, will the advent of technology help us bring finality to this issue? And will the advancement in science help us close this issue once and for all? And more importantly, what will be the content of the test results? The country is waiting to hear from the police services. Grace Hamwa Asari, TV3 News, Accra. And tonight in this segment, organizers of the Ghana Arts and Culture Awards in collaboration with the National Commission on Culture have officially launched and opened nominations for the maiden edition of the awards. And the award scheme seeks to honor individuals and brands that have made major contributions to the arts and culture industry in Ghana. In all, 18 award categories are up for grabs, counting Cultural Television Program of the Year, Art Festival of the Year, Traditional Music Group of the Year, Cultural Heritage Entrepreneur of the Year, among others. These awards seek to honor and appreciate the forerunners, brands and key players who have contributed greatly to arts and culture industry 
here in Ghana and beyond. Despite being in its first year, the launch of the awards attracted a lot of interest. Sparking the launch, the Executive Director of National Commission and Culture, Mrs. Edna Janet Nyame, urged all to support in the promotion of the Ghanaian cultural heritage. I believe it is everyone's responsibility to ensure that the society, more importantly the youth, are reminded of these power and wealth embedded in our cultural heritage, which have directed our lives over the years till today. The scheme seeks to honor individuals and brands that have made major contributions to the arts and culture industry in Ghana. The final award ceremony is scheduled to take place on November 23 at the Accra International Conference Center. On behalf of the National Commission on Culture, I declare the Ghana Arts and Culture Awards 2019 and nominations duly launched. And that will do for this edition of News 360, which came to you live from the News app at the Sunway. I am Nisa Moni. And I am Portia Gabo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening.